Hello everyone, my name is Ryan. I'm a psychological associate at My and Body Garden Psychology. As an Asian American, this past week has been pretty heavy to me, especially in the Asian community. There's two tragedies happen in California. One happened in Monterey Park, another one happened in Half Moon Bay. As an Asian male mental health clinician, the shooting events have invoked a lot of feelings, a lot of ideas that I have about mental health issues among our Asian males, especially the older Asian males. There are two tragedies happen, and both of them, the suspect, they have a lot of similarities in terms of their background. Both of them, they are immigrants, they are male, they are Asian, and one of them, right now, according to the investigations, he was also bullied and had long working hours in the farm. Today we are not talking about gun control matters. We want to talk about how to take care of our mental health issues as Asian minorities in the United States. According to the US Department of Health and Human Services, the statistic is kind of worrying me a lot. The percentage of Asian adults who seek mental health services is only at 7%. In comparison to non-Hispanic whites, the majority population who seek mental health support, it is about 20%. So, less than 1 out of 10 Asian adults who seek mental health support, compared to almost 1 in 5 white population. Today, I'm going to talk about two important things. First, minority stress. What is minority stress, first of all? As a minority, we experience a lot of different events that may not happen to the majority people in America. The definition of it is a high level of stress faced by members of stigmatized minority groups. Because minority experience a very broad range of events such as internalized racism, oppressions, stereotypes, hate crimes, fear of deportations, and in Asian culture, we prefer compromises. We avoid face-to-face -face disagreement, confrontations. We try to avert open discussion about controversies. However, the longer, the more we suppress our negative emotions, they will directly impact our physical and mental health, such as heart disease, anxiety, depressions, and other stress-related disorders and issues. Another one, is called vicarious trauma, or some people may call it secondary trauma. So what is that, you know? That trauma doesn't only apply to minority, it's applied to everyone, because it is a psychological response that results from witnessing or hearing about other people pain, suffering, or death, such as the shooting event. We may worry a lot, we may have a lot of repetitive thoughts about the event that will increase our fear. We may have nightmare. We may change in sleep patterns and appetites. So, if you are Asian or minority group, how can we cope with our minority stress? First, we need to maintain a healthy work-life balance. We need to have outside interests. We need to get enough sleep. We need to eat healthy and exercise regularly. Think about it this way. If we spend 10, 12 hours at work in a farm, do we have time to do those activities? Probably not, right? We need to develop a schedule. We need to commit to have a healthy work-life balance. Taking care of yourself, taking care of your health, including your mental health, the money will come. We need to focus on more connections with our family members and friends. We can also join some social group with other people who share similar background and experience that you may have in order to find the support and connections to improve our emotional and mental health. You can always reduce your exposure to the traumatic event, such as limit the usage on the media, usage on your phone, your phone may not be your friend all the time. The content in your phone or in the media sometimes may invoke a very strong emotions and make you feel uncomfortable. Before you know how to cope with those negative emotions, it is better try to avoid looking at those traumatic news in the media. 
don't be ashamed to ask for help. As an Asian American, when I used to grow up, I tend to suppress my emotions a lot because it's not a good way to tell the other people what my emotions are about. However, we are all human beings who need social and emotional support to maintain our mental health. If you look at the statistic that I mentioned earlier, we really need to improve the usage of mental health services. We can seek mental health professional for assistance, such as therapists, social workers, psychologists, and psychiatrists. That is something we can control. Although we feel hopeless and helpless on the matters of gun control right now, but our mental health is in our control. If you want to know more about different roles about mental health professionals, please subscribe our YouTube channel. We will talk about the differences between them in the future video by other clinicians. Thank you so much, and I hope to share other information to you guys in the future.